Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at some basic electrical materials that we need to use during electrical wiring. So the main purpose for this video is to show you the correct names of some basic electrical materials that we need during electrical wiring. Okay, so quickly, we will start from here. There are various switches that we use in our electrical wiring. And then you should be able to identify these switches so that you can appropriately apply them in your wiring. First of all, to be able to identify a particular switch, you will have to also look at the back. For instance, when we pick this one, there is one actuator here, which we normally refer to as the gang. But when you turn it, you have three terminals at the back. So you have a common terminal, and then you have other one, two terminals. This one too, when you pick this one, it also has one actuator. But looking at the back, it has only two terminals. So there is a common and another one terminal. Therefore, this switch is not the same as this one because their internal connections are not the same. This has only two terminals, and this has three terminals. So the correct name for this type of switch is one gang, one way. So this is a one gang, one way switch. The one with three terminals, is called one gang two way. So this is a one gang two way switch. Okay. Then when we pick the next one, the next one also has one gang. And then it has a similar one that also has the same one gang. But then, as I said earlier, before we'll be able to know exactly what type of switch this type is, we have to look at the back. And then looking at the back, this is another one gang two-way switch. So this is common, and then there are other two ways. What about this one? This also has one gang. But when we turn the back, there are six terminals. And so this is an intermediate switch. If you want to know how to wire this type of intermediate switch, I have shared a link under the description of this video that will take you to how to wire this same type of intermediate switch. So they all have one gang, but they are not the same switch. So this is a one gang two-way switch, and this is an intermediate switch. Then the next one, we have one with three gangs. We have one with three gangs. So one, two, three gangs. So when we turn the back, you notice that this is just like putting three of the two-way switches together. So you have one two-way, which is L1, L2. Then we have another two-way, which is L1, L2. And then a third two-way, which is L1, L2. So this is three gang two-way switch. Then the other one has two gangs. And then it's also just like putting two of the two-way switches together because this is how one two-way switch looks like. And so you have one, two, three, one, two, three. But then there is another one, two, three here. So this becomes two gang two-way, meaning two of one gun two-way switches put together. Then the next item, this one I believe most of us are familiar with this item, and this is called pattern lamp holder. Now, the lamp holders, we have two types of them. This is the bayonet cap lamp holder, or B22 lamp holder, that one uses the pin type of lamp. So you just insert it, press it, and then turn it, and it locks. 
the other lamp holder is called the A27 or the screw type lamp holder. And that is used for a bulb or a lamp that has a screw thread. This one has two pins. You press and then lock. So this pin type lamp holder or B22 lamp holder, this screw type lamp holder or E27 lamp holder. The next item we have here is pipe. This is what we normally use to accommodate our electrical wires, especially when we are doing a wiring that we don't want anything to show on the wall. We first of all place this conduit inside the wall and then the cables are drawn into this pipe inside the wall. We can also use this pipe for surface wiring. Surface wiring is a wiring that has either this pipe or a trunking arranged on the surface of the wall and then the wires are passed through this. The reason why we always need this one is for protection of our cables. So this one serves as a mechanical protection against any damage that could happen to the cables. Then similarly, we also have this other one. This is called trunking and this is 25 by 16 millimeters. So the name for this box is circular box, but we have them differently. They come in different shapes. So if you look at this one, this one is a circular box, but it has three branches. So we can call this one C circular box or three-way circular box. And this other one also comes with four branches. And so this one is also known as a four-way circular box or four-way intersection circular box. We normally use this one when we are doing conduit wiring. And so wherever your conduit terminates or wherever your conduit ends, you fix one of this one. And then depending on the number of branches you'll be taking from this box to other connections, you can either use a four-way intersection or a T circular box, or you can also use a circular box that has just one entrance. It means there will not be any extension or any connection from here to any other uh, any other thing. Then we also have this item, and the name of this is saddle. The saddle, we have different types, but this particular one is known as a space bar saddle. Space bar saddle. In case we want to do wiring, but we don't want to pass, or we don't want to use this pipe inside the wall, we want to install it on the surface. Then, this one comes in. First, you remove the top, and then you install this one on the surface and then your conduit comes then you bring this one again so this bar spaces your conduit a little bit away from the surface or from the installation surface and this is normally done when you want to prevent dust from collecting on the conduit Okay, and then when we are using trunking, we use tapping screws to secure the trunking to the mounting surface before our cables are drawn in. The trunking has a cover, so you remove the cover, you arrange your cables, and then you cover it back. All right, this is a socket, but this type specifically 
is a 13 arm double socket. Or we can also refer to this as 13 arm twin socket. Then here we have a single one. So this is also 13 arm socket. But this is single. Okay, the next item we we'll talk about is the miniature circuit breaker. So this is a circuit breaker, and every circuit breaker has a rating, the amount of current that it can withstand. So this here is a 100 amp breaker. But then, if you look at these two, this has two terminals here, two input and then two output terminals. This has just one. So then the correct name for this breaker is double pool breaker double pool breaker or two pool breaker this one is a single pool breaker single pool breaker or one pool breaker so one pool breaker double pool breaker then next to it we have another device that looks just like a breaker but this one actually is called RCBO. RCBO means residual current device with overcurrent protection. So this device can perform both the works of a miniature circuit breaker. At the same time, it can also do the work of an RCD perfectly in an installation. Then there is one item that we can't do without in terms of electrical wire and that is the consumer unit. This is the consumer unit. Many people refer to this as the main switch. But in actual fact, the distribution board is more like a combination of a main switch and then other breakers or protective devices for distribution of power to the various circuits. So here, we have a two-pole breaker. That is the main switch. When this one is off, all the power supply to the loads in the wiring will go off. And then these individual breakers are connected to the various circuits in the wiring. Now, the size of consumer unit you choose for your wiring will depend on the number of circuits you have in the wiring. Meaning that, for instance, if you have the wiring where you have maybe five lights, and then three sockets in the wire. Then you can use something simple like this. Anything more than that, you have to use a bigger size. Consumer units are identified by number of weights. And so, for instance, this consumer unit will be referred to as a two-way consumer unit because it has only two breakers in it. If the breakers here are four, then it will be a four-way consumer unit. If these breakers are six, then it becomes a six-way consumer unit. If they are eight, then this becomes an eight-way consumer unit. Then we move to our next item. The next item here is just another type or a different type of two-gang, two-way switch. Okay, in another video, I'll demonstrate how to wire this type of two-gang, two-way switch. Then, there is another item here. This is a photo cell. Anytime there is darkness, it will operate to switch on all the light that it will be connected to. And so, for instance, any time darkness falls on it, whether you are around to switch on your light or not, this does the work of switching on your light for you. It is normally used for street lights or outside lights in the house. Then we also have these boxes. This is known as Patres box. We normally refer to them by their sizes. So this one is commonly known as 3x6 Patres box. And then we have a smaller one that is also known as 
three by three Patrice books. What do we use them for? These boxes are normally used when we want our wiring to be on the surface. When we are doing surface wiring, we mount this on the wall. And then this can take either a switch like this or a single 13 arm socket. Okay. Then the bigger one is solely for mounting double sockets like this. Okay, then definitely we can't do electrical wiring without our electrical wires or electrical cables. And so these are also electrical cables that we always use during our wiring. We normally use the 1.5 for our lighting circuits and then we use the 2.5 for our sockets. Okay. All right, so these are some of the materials that we need when doing our electrical wiring. I'll come your way again with more. But before then, the next thing we are going to talk about is how to be able to place these materials or these accessories in an electrical drawing or as an electrician. How will you be able to identify these items when they are shown on an electrical drum. So we use what we call electrical symbols to represent some of these materials or some of these accessories that we use during our electrical wiring. So that if you have an electrical drawing or if you have a plan and then you have to follow that plan to do your wiring, you will be able to identify whenever you see a 13 arm double socket or whenever you see a consumer unit and then whenever you see your one gun one way, one gun two way, two gun two way or intermediate switches. So we are going to look at the symbols that represent some of these electrical materials.